started and I had just four ATMs, people were kind of looking at me and they would think, oh, it's just a guy with like four ATMs. He's more like a side hustle. He doesn't really take it seriously. And when I went to 10 ATMs and I started telling people I had 10 ATMs, I can see it in their face like, oh, shit, like he's actually really doing it. Now that I tell people that I have 30 ATMs, they're like, whoa, like, how did you do that? <laughs> and really, it's through just hard work, networking, and just being at the right place. So we're doing something different now. We are doing this podcast thing because honestly, I have learned that trying to create these little 10 minute videos is really, really hard. I think it's a lot easier for me to just sit in front of a camera and just talk, talk about what's going on with my life, my past experiences, how I got to where I'm at and where I'm going because I want to create content. But in order for me to create content, I need to figure out a way to make it easier for me. I love things that are easy efficient, fast. That's how I like to run things. That's how I like to run my whole entire life because it's so much more simpler and that's why I don't stress as much as a lot of people. So I've come to the conclusion that running a podcast and running this whole full-time videos is a lot easier. So from now on, I'm going to make 30, 45 minute, an hour videos because it's easier for me to create content. I could create short form clips. I can create short form clips through this thing and Honestly, I think that's the best way to put my identity out there. So hopefully one of these short form clips goes viral. But either way, I always have something to talk about because things are always happening to me. So this video, I was going to make it into a 10 minute video, but it turns out that I want to make it a full form video. And it should actually be the first video of this whole entire podcast because it's actually one of the reasons why you should listen to me now. I, by all means, have not made it there, but I live a really great life. Where I'm at right now, a lot of people just want to get here. A lot of people just want to get to six figures, have some passive income, and kind of just afloat, as I like to call it, which there's nothing wrong with. Honestly, the place where I'm at in my life is really fucking amazing. But today's video, because it has been a really long time that I haven't made a video, or at least a long-form video, I want to talk about how I went from zero ATMs to over 30 ATMs in just the span of three years. I still remember a couple years back where I was looking up businesses and I was trying to find a business that was going to suit my lifestyle. And I had a couple of thousand bucks saved up and I really wanted to invest it into something. And I was thinking, okay, I can invest it into stocks. I can invest it into real estate. But really the most important thing for me right now is cash flow. And I think for any 20-year-old, that's the most important thing we care about. I honestly don't care about wealth. I don't care about how much my house is going to be worth 20, 30 years from now. I care about money in my pocket right now. And that's what a lot of people don't tell us is that, yeah, building wealth is great. Building wealth in a matter of 50 years that they don't tell us, I don't care about that. I need money right now. Cash flow is what I need. So a lot of people aren't teaching us how to get money right now. So I got into the business because I wanted to invest into something. And I looked at practically every single business. I still look at so many businesses that I can possibly buy one day because I just love business. That's what's in my blood. That's what I wanted. But I needed to find a business that was not only going to fit into my type of lifestyle, but was going to give me the cash flow that I wanted. And ATMs were the best investment for me because it's what I can afford, it's what fit my lifestyle, and plus the cash flow is amazing. The way I got into the business is there's a website that you can buy businesses. It's called Biz Buy Sell, and there's a bunch of marketplaces out there that sell businesses. And every now and then, I like to spend time there where I look at businesses that are on first sale, and I imagine, well, one day, maybe I'll buy one. And at this point, it was when COVID hit, and I was looking at these businesses, and I'm all like, I can afford to buy this business. 
And I started looking into the ATM business, just like a lot of people probably finding me now is how to buy an ATM route, things like that. Well, I did the math and the math ended up making sense where if I invested this money, I would get my money back within two to three years. And I thought it was too good to be true, just like everything online, it's too good to be true. Well, I decided to take a little bit of a risk and I ended up buying my ATM route from somebody else. Now, the original ATM route that I was going to buy was for eight machines for about $48,000. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't tell you about the ATM business. It's not just buying the ATMs or buying the business. You still have to run that business, meaning you need more capital. So in order for me to get started into this business, not only did I need to come up with the $48,000 I needed to come up with an additional twenty to thirty thousand dollars in order to operate the business, and that's what a lot of people don't tell you when it comes to getting into the ATM business. That it is a capital intense game, and I didn't know how intense it was going to be when it came to capital when I first got started. Either way, there was a very bad hiccup in the very beginning of me even getting started into the business. First of all, I didn't have forty-eight thousand dollars to invest into this company. And at this point in time, that's when I was starting to hear about seller finance. And I'm not going to go dive too deep into it of what it is. Seller finance is basically when someone decides to become the bank for you. Um, I decided to create a deal with this owner. Because it was COVID, this guy was trying to get rid of this route because he wanted to shorten up his position in the marketplace. And it was a great opportunity for me because the guy was motivated to sell. So... Obviously, when it comes to buying a business, you don't really trust the person. You don't know if that person is legit. You don't know anything. So I'm a good reader of people because I do sales. I do high ticket sales and I meet almost, I've met almost every possible human being there is out here. So I can read people fairly easily. And there was something about this guy that I just knew he was not going to fuck me over. And I don't know, like I've been fucked over plenty of times lost thousands of dollars for listening or believing in somebody, but this guy just seemed different. So I met up with him at the location to look at the ATM route. And for me, it fit all my boxes. It was nearby. Um, it had the people coming in. So it had an audience of potential clients that can possibly use the ATMs and it had the numbers. So the numbers were making sense. So Unfortunately, I didn't have the $48,000 to come up with the money to pay for this ATM route. So I thought I was going to be able to gather friends and families to get the money that I needed. Fortunately, I don't come from a really rich family. So there wasn't very many people that I can ask, nor did I have a track record of success. Now, if I ask for money, I think I could come up with $50,000, $100,000 very easily from friends and family because I have a track record now. But at that point, I really just had my bank account and one believer, my mom. My mom believed in business and she didn't really understand the business, but she believed in me. She believed in me because I already kind of started building my track record in regards of the fact that I know what I'm doing with my life. I take risks and I take calculated risks and they have worked out for me. And the only way for us to move forward in life is to take even bigger risks. And we had that conversation. So my mom had some money saved up. I think it was about $10,000 that she let me borrow to start this ATM business. And I had my own. I didn't have the rest of the, what, $30,000 to start this business plus the money I needed to put into the machine. So I figured, look, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. I talked to the guy I talked to the guide and I told him, hey, I don't have the money. I don't have $48,000 to the guy that was the broker. I don't have $48,000. This is all I have. I don't know if there's something that we can do, something that we can work out. So he reaches out to the ATM owner and he tells him, hey, look, this is what he can do. Anyways, we come up with a deal. And this is where I started to find out about creative finance. And if you don't know about creative finance, look it up. It's something that you want to get your hands into because I've done this plenty of times already. Um, creative finance is the best thing in the world. So we came up with a plan with the owner where we created a deal where I would put $3,000 down, 
just to know that I have some skin in the game and that I'm really serious. So I put $3,000 down. I was going to come up with $7,000 at closing, and I needed to have at least another $6,000 to put money into the machines. And how this deal would work is I would take pieces of the machines. So there was eight machines that were up for sale. I got four of them up front through this deal. These four were going to produce anywhere from like, say, 500 to 800 bucks a month. And I'm all like, okay, in just a couple of years, I'll be able to get the rest. So I ended up getting half of the machines for $24,000. I put about, what, like 11000 I am so bad at math. You guys can do the math. But I needed to finance an additional $12,000 for one year at zero interest, meaning in the one year I was going to pay this guy the remaining balance, not only through the cash flow that I was getting from the ATMs, but just my money in general. I took the risk. And I said, let's do it. So I took over the ATMs. And since then, in the first year, it just was more about learning the business. And honestly, the first year, I didn't know anything. I am so lucky that this guy is a really nice guy that he taught me the business and he kind of held my hand to the, it all. And anytime I had a question, he would answer it. And it's because he still owns the business himself he's still in the business he owns over 100 atms and he's a really great guy um funny enough his name is the same name as mine chris all chris's are amazing the second year going into the business i still had four atms and i was thinking to myself okay i need to figure out a way to grow this um after a year i did my payments continued doing my sales and slowly started paying those machines off it took me about a year to pay these things off from there on out another opportunity came up where the guys that I was working with at one of the shops wanted to open up his tattoo shop. And I got another location through a referral. And the way I got this um, ATM, because again, I was lacking capital, is I got it on a credit card at zero interest, and I took a risk. I took a risk at the fact that this ATM was going to perform. And now it's one of my best ATMs to this date. That ATM breaks in, brings in anywhere from like $700 to $800 a month on one ATM. So I got my unicorn through these guys. The next couple of ATMs, now we're at five. So the next ATMs were in Ventura. That's when I started to expand in Ventura. So my ATMs in Ventura. It was another, it was my second year and I'm looking at how can I expand my business? How can I grow this business? How can I make this business more worthwhile? How can I find another deal? Can I do the same thing I just did with another owner and I found it. So I'm always researching things. I'm always looking at businesses for sale and I'm always looking for routes for sale. So if you're selling an ATM route, let me know because I'm willing to buy it if the numbers make sense. Because for me, all I care about is cash flow. I hold these ATMs because they cash flow. So one day I was looking at this website that sells ATM parts and they have a classified ad, almost like an offer up. So I went on there and I saw that there was a guy that was selling his route in Ventura. And I looked at the numbers where he had two machines. Um, the numbers were great in regards of cash flow. They were making about like $400 a month with just two machines. And he wanted, I think he wanted about $5,000 for it. And he was just trying to get out of the business because he lived really freaking far, like as San Bernardino. And he was traveling all the way to Ventura. So it was like a two hour drive for just two machines and it wasn't worth his time, which now I'm really trying to understand why that works. Like time, people don't even understand that time is a cost that, time is one of those things that costs you money and you don't factor that in. So when I made the purchase, I was thinking more about the cash flow. Like I'm gonna go be able to get another, I'm gonna get closer to that passive number that I need. So I met up with the guy all the way in Ventura, same situation. This time, I kind of knew what I was looking for because I was running machines for about a year and I knew what to look for in a machine, as in this part's going to break down, how is it connected, how old is the machine, all these little factors that I didn't know when it first came down to buying my first route. The second time around, buying my next route, I knew what I was looking for. So I met up with the guy, started chatting it up. Actually, we got along I could still call him any day and I'm pretty sure uh, we could probably travel because he loves to travel too so it made sense it made sense for me I really just needed an extra 
four grand plus an extra four grand to put into the machine. And I had another acquisition of a more two machines. So we're at what, seven? So at this point in my life, my second year of the ATM business, I got another group of ATMs by just acquisitions, really just taking over somebody else's business, just didn't want to be here. And that's one of the ways you can get into the business. But it doesn't happen all the time. Like these things don't happen all the time. For example, what? It, I did it once, one year, and then once another year. And then I'm doing it. I did it again this year. So my third year in, I got another set of ATM. So one set, actually. So this ATM came from a referral. So I believe in community. You always have to network with people that are in your same circle, that are doing the same things that you're doing. So we have a Facebook group in the ATM community, which I am a part of, which I try to be very active, try to give my advice. And there's a lot of people on there that give really good advice. Don't listen to all these gurus out there. Just go to the group and we can help you guys out if you want to start an ATM business. So a good friend of mine who helps a lot of people, I stay communicating with him back and forth all the time. And he posted that someone was selling a route in Orange County. And I told myself, well, if the numbers make sense, I don't mind the drive. Like I drive for a living a lot. Like I'm used to driving. One hour, two hours is not a lot of driving for me. A lot of people stress out with an hour driving. No, for me, an hour is normal. And the numbers made sense where this machine itself is making anywhere from like 300 bucks a month. And I figured, okay, he wants, I think he wanted like $3,500 for the machine. I don't know these numbers by heart. I have them written down. If you want to know them, I can give you them. But it was about 3,500 bucks. And I was looking at the deal and this guy just bought a brand new machine. He was barely into the business one year in, but he soon realized what a lot of people realized that this is a capital intense game. And if you don't have a way to pour money back into your business, your business is not going to grow. And it doesn't get good until you own over 10 ATMs. So this person realized that soon and he was going to go to school and he was going to leave the state. So he needed to sell fast. He was motivated. And again, I found a motivated seller. I messaged the guy who was my friend and he told me that the numbers made, like, made sense. It was a reasonable price and I would make my money back within one and a half years. So I met up with the guy. Honestly, we clicked really well. I make these con I'm making this podcast and I'm making content because the people that I network with, the ones that I connect with, they speak my language. When I was talking to this guy, he spoke my language. The same thing happened with the other route and the same thing happened with the other guy. Us business people, we think alike and that's the people that I want to be around and that's why I make this content and why I'm choosing to make platform content because I've noticed a pattern every single time I get UATMs and meet more business owners, I build my community up, I build my network up, and I make more money. So we got along. Funny story about that one is the fact that he told me how hard it was to get that location. And that location is a really prime location. I love that location, as a matter of fact. So he told me that he had to go to that owner three times. Three times before he got them to sign the deal. So to all my people out there that are starting your ATM business, you have to hustle in the beginning. They're not going to get a yes in the very beginning. Um, fortunately for me, I've never been, have been the one to go out and get brand new locations. I do it the more expensive way where I buy it off of other people. But I have the capital to play this game. It's almost like real estate. When you go ahead and buy a house and you hold it, it that's the same thing that I do for the ATM business. I just buy someone else's business that it's cash flowing and makes sense. And then I'll just wait for my money back. Because right now, all I care about is cash flow. That's it. So I got that machine. That machine went well. There were some hiccups along the way. Like, it's never been perfect. Like, anything in life, it's never going to be perfect. Like, one of the things I forgot to mention was in the second time that I bought the route, the one over there in Ventura, what happened is that one of the machines one week into buying my location, stopped working. And we couldn't figure out what was going on with that machine. And it was a drive to Ventura, which is an hour away from where I live. And I was driving over there 
practically almost every single day. And if you take into account gas, you take into account time, I just couldn't afford to keep doing this. So at one point, I got so upset that we couldn't figure this thing out where I just bought a new machine. So remember how I told you about this machine for like $10,000? Well, I spent another, what, $3,000 to get a new machine in there. So now I'm into the deal seven grand. So now it's going to take me over two years to get my money back. The worst thing about all of this is that a month, like after I fixed my machine, the numbers for that machine, which is the machine that was actually making the numbers make sense, go down a lot, like a lot. And I'm think, expecting that I'm going to make like $400 off of this route and I end up bringing only like 200 bucks a month. And I'm taking an L and I'm all like, oh, I'm just going to hold this machine. Plus I have to drive over there. It just was a headache. Crazy enough, fast forward to today, that is one of my top performing machines now. I don't know what that business owner did, but he's pushing cash like crazy. And I make, what, close to 500 bucks on that one machine. Now we're at, what, four machines, two machines, three machines. I think we're at eight. I'm bad at math. This is how I got the rest of the machines. So in this business, you can do something else besides buying the machine, owning the machine. You can do what's called vaulting. And I heard about this when I was talking to the guy that originally sold me the first route. And he told me that there's, in order for you to grow in this business, you can't do it alone. And I've realized that now, especially when you start getting way more machines in different areas, you cannot do it alone. So at one point, you're going to have to find what's called vaulters. People like myself, I love being a vaulter as a matter of fact, um, super easy, but don't hire just any vaulter because some vaulters actually starting to get into the business, uh, it causing a hiccup nowadays. A vaulter is someone that can get his money and put it into your machine. So it's almost the same thing as real estate, right? Everyone eats. There's three people that eat the person that puts the money into the machine the person that owns the machine and the person that owns the store and you split profits three ways. Usually it's a dollar, 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 or it can be more on either side, depending on how much you split off to the owner. When COVID hit, my machine, the original route went down and I told the owner and we actually had something in the contract where if six months, the machines weren't performing how they were supposed to be performing, then he would get me new machines. So he actually went and gave me two machines that he also owns in the same place that where I'm at, where I can vault. And those numbers made up for the machines that went down because they closed down for a little bit, the store that I was at. So COVID hit the business and it's never been able to recuperate since then. But luckily I got these more machines and now I was making, I think I was making about like a thousand dollars a month at that point until I started getting the Ventura and the Orange County one. So end of second year, I finished all of this third year with that other machine. And this is where I really doubled down on the business. So last year, one of the goals that I went into 2023 was double my ATM business, get rid of this debt that I have and get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I doubled the business already. Getting rid of the debt, I'm practically almost already there. And the last one, getting to 1,000 subscribers, we're halfway there. So if you can help me out, please hit the subscribe button. Help your boy out. When I was coming up with this plan, I told myself I needed to try a lot of these different things. One of the things that I tell everyone is you have to listen to people that are 10, 15, 20, 30 years ahead of you and listen to their advice and actually take action on those advice so you can actually live a better life. There's one thing I heard, I don't know who I heard it from, but in order for you to become valuable to somebody else that's already having things, that's already having success, you have to become some sort of person of value. And you don't know how to provide value unless you ask or unless you find something that's flowing. One of the things that I noticed from my business partner was the fact that he doesn't have too many employees that are very bright or in this business, in the business world, you can't find a lot of good people. So at the end of the year in December, I wanted to tell him like, 
hey, I'm taking this business really seriously. If there's anything that you need from me that I can help you with, let me know. And I planted that seed back in December. And I planted that seed right around Christmas time. And I told them like, hey, um, I'm taking this business really seriously. If there's anything that you need help with, let me know. Three months, four months into the year, he reaches out to me. He says that he's losing his best employee. Um, that girl knew everything about the ATM business, but she wanted to be an engineer. So kudos to her. And this was my opportunity to shine. So I don't know how things just fall in place for me sometimes where it's crazy. I don't even, I honestly don't understand sometimes how things happen to me in my life because it just falls perfectly. Like my life is weird and I call it weird. So you remember how I'm driving a Ventura every single week, once a week for just two machines? The reason I bought those machines was also to push me into growing the route over there in Ventura. So it won't just be two machines that I'm filling out because that's what the last business owner told me. Like, if you want to make this worthwhile, you have to go ahead and get more machines. Turns out that there is a company who, according to them, they own a lot of machines nationwide, but they were struggling to find somebody to vote these machines. Here's the thing about being Volter. You also need a lot of capital. So they had a route of about 10 more machines that they needed to fill. And in this business, you need to have big pockets. I don't have the money to vault that, but guess who does? My business partner. And that's when the conversation in December came up and he realized this is where I can use Chris or this is where I can use him, right? So one of the things my business partner told me, he said, hey, there's a guy that's looking for a Voltor in Ventura. I know you get a Ventura. I don't know if it's going to fit your schedule. And I figured I can do it because I go to Ventura. So when I told my business partner, I said, hey, I drive over there every single week. Why not work together? Why not you, if the numbers make sense, let me borrow your money and I'll go put that money into those machines over there. And if the numbers make sense, we all eat. And he did the numbers and they made sense. And honestly, we've been running that machine, those machines out there for a, like three, four months. And now Business is booming. We're now on cash flowing using other people's money. And all I'm doing is putting the sweat equity. And really, all I do is I go there once a week to fill out all these machines. It just takes one day out of this whole entire week to run my business. And that's why I love the ATM business. So now I'm up the 11 machines that I have plus another 10. And at the same time that I'm creating this deal, I'm creating a deal with this owner, my business partner. And I tell him, why not do the same for you? So he came up with a list so his employees won't have to drive all the way over here to LA and I could just meet them somewhere, pick up the money and bolt some of these machines in some of these locations. So now, not only do I have my machines, those machines in Ventura, he gave me an extra, I want to say 15 to be conservative. So now I'm at 30 machines. And I'm also borrowing his money because I don't have the vaulting money to put into those machines, right? It's a lot of money, like a lot. Now I'm borrowing his money and we're putting it into those machines. I'm getting 50 cents a transaction because it's not my money. If it was my money, I would have been making way more money. But with all the time, I have 30 machines. And the way this is profitable, and some people are going to probably ask themselves, why would this guy let you borrow his money so you can make money? Well, like I said, this whole entire business requires people. You can't do this thing alone. And I've learned that now. I remember when I was younger, I thought that I can do it all. I know it all. And I can make a lot of money by myself. No way, dude. You cannot do this by yourself. You cannot do life by yourself. I know I can't do it by myself. I need a team. I need an army. And that's what I'm doing in my life. And I create partners. I create partners 
with other people that are better than me, that are more equipped than me, so I can also eat. And that's why I tell people you need to network with other people, put yourself out there, but first fix yourself, become valuable. So when you do go to these people, you can actually provide value. Like if it wasn't for my expertise in the ATM business, taking this seriously and him showing him my work effort, you think I would get the money that I needed to fill up in Ventura? No way. Same thing with like the other area in LA. I, I don't want to say the area in LA because everyone kind of knows it. Um, but it's going to be really hard doing this day because I don't want people to know where my machines are at because you will know. Um, you think somebody would trust me if I wasn't valuable with that money? And I'm not talking about just 10,000 bucks, even to fill my machines. My machines require $20,000 to get them running and operating. You think someone's going to let me just borrow that money? No, I earned his trust. I earned his respect. I became valuable to him. Now I do things because I want that relationship to also grow because we have really good plans for this ATM business that can honestly take me to where I would like it to go. And plus it's good ending like now I'm the ATM guy when I go out to these networking events and I tell people yeah I have over 30 ATMs their they, their personalities changed and I've noticed this thing now that I when I originally started and I had just four ATMs people were kind of looking at me and they would think oh it's just a guy with like four ATMs he's more like a side hustle he doesn't really take it seriously and when I went to 10 ATMs and I started telling people I had 10 ATMs I can see it in their face like oh shit like he's actually really doing it. Now that I tell people that I have 30 ATMs, they're like, whoa, like, how did you do that? <laughs> and really, it's through just hard work, networking, being at the right place at the right time. So that's how things work out for me. And now I'm the ATM guy and I can use it for my brand where I can just film and talk about how I got to where I'm at. Plus, not only that, but the money is really great. Now I'm at a point where... The money that I make from my ATMs, I don't really care. People can know I don't really care about money. It's more of a game for me. I make about $3,000 from my ATMs passively, I would say passively. Um, but I only work them less than a part-time job. I would say that. I work one full day and maybe one hour extra. Besides that, Maybe on occasion, if a machine breaks down here and there, I'll work a little bit more. Besides that, I'm not really doing much. And it fits my lifestyle. It's just a capital intense game. I love this business. So we're not done yet because even though I have 30 ATMs, there's another finesse that I did, right? In order for me to make all these deals work, I also had to make it meet sense for my business partner and how you remember the first ATM route that I told you about that deal was still going on where originally I just bought the first half I still needed to buy the other half like it was in the contract that one day I would buy the other half and I told my business partner hey why don't we do this why don't I work these machines and all the money that I get in profit from the Ventura ones from the LA ones, all the profit, just give it back to yourself. I don't even want to see that money and put it towards the new set of ATMs. So now I am paying off another two ATMs. At the moment that I'm making this video, I already paid off one. I'm going to pay off the other one probably at the end of this month and I'll own another two. So not only do I own, what, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm at nine that I physically own. And then the other rest, I just vote for other people. I get more money. So now I get a full dollar in some of these ATMs. And soon enough, I'm going to get the other ATMs and the other ATMs. And it's just a matter of time, halfway through the year, maybe even sooner that I will own not only, I'll own about 15 ATMs myself and then vote over 30. And that's when the real money makes that's you know, the money is already kind of there. I personally believe everyone has differences in how much money is a lot of money. But for me, it covers my living expenses. And that's why right now what I tell people is I don't live paycheck to paycheck anymore. On occasionally, the, a the thing that I love about the ATM business is that it's very predictable. You know how much money you're going to bring in every single month. Say, for example, for me right now, 
because the thousand dollars goes towards everything else, I keep about two thousand bucks. So two thousand bucks I get to keep, and those two thousand bucks cover practically my rent uh, and my car payments. And that's how I was able to finesse a Tesla last month. And I'll tell you guys that in another video because that's going to be an interesting story as well. But here's the thing that makes all of this thing make sense as well is one of the lessons that I tell people all the time is you have to learn to keep your expenses low, keep your expenses low and your income really high. I wouldn't be able to make a lot of these moves is if it wasn't for my career right now, which is high income sales. I do high ticket sales. Sales is the best way to make six figures. And I tell that to everyone. If you want to get out of level zero and go to at least level one, get into sales. It may not be for you. It's not for everyone, but you can at least try it. Just give it a go. For me, I learned very on that I'm good at sales. I'm good at talking. And I took full advantage of that. And now this is where I'm at. Would I start the ATM business again, knowing everything that I know? I don't know. I don't, when people ask me about the fact, would they get into the business? I always tell them no. No, because it requires a lot of capital. And if you don't have a way to make a lot of money, this game does not make sense for you. You're not going to be able to grow with just one ATM, two ATMs, three ATMs. It doesn't get better until 10. And in this market, in the LA market, it's super saturated. So a lot of people trying to get into this game can barely find the location. So I don't even myself, I don't even know how big I want to make this. So I'm looking at different things. But for now, I'm going to use this as my leverage, as my brand that I have 30 ATMs. And I got something for it. I've got something to prove. I am a somebody. I got something going on. I'm not like a lot of people just kind of like living by it. Plus, even, even, even being a high ticket salesman, what? How many people actually make over six figures? Very few. Less than 10% of the people makes over six figures. And I live really nicely here in LA. I am pretty well off. Um, I would say personally, but you can have your own definition of what off is. But yeah, that's the story of how I went from zero ATMs to over 30 ATMs in just a matter of three years. It was a lot of hard work, took a lot of money, took a lot of networking, but we got it done. We got it done. And a lot of it just came down to always visualizing the fact that this was the end game. That's why setting goals is very important. Now, I'm not sure how you guys felt about this whole new type of filming. I love it. We're running 42 minutes now. I can talk and talk for hours. But this is what we're going to be doing now. I don't have a name for this podcast yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But I know for a fact that I still need to create co content. I need to document my life. And I don't want to be just the ATM guy. So I want to talk about other things like life, business, self-improvement health, all these different things that just make interesting conversations. I love interesting conversations. And if this is the one of the ways that I can have them with friends, families, whoever I have to bring onto the podcast to make my life more interesting than what it already is, then so be it. So I am looking for a co-host because I can't just talk to myself all the time. I mean, I can, I'll probably do videos by myself every now and then, but if I can find a co-host who can question me, who can debate me in regards of life, the way they see life, the way they see money, and we could just talk about it and not have anyone get upset. I am looking for a co-host. Preferably, I would like a girl just because I would like female perspective and a lot of these things that I think about. But it is what it is. I need to find someone who I also can connect with and keep a conversation because a lot of people can connect, can keep a conversation, nor are they good on camera, nor are they shy, all these different things that go into making all this. But I am going to start off with making one video a week, only two videos at one point, because I did notice that doing this was fairly far easier than creating a 10 minute video. And I love doing this. Plus, one of the reasons why I even make all of this, I don't even care if it blows up. I don't care if I blow up is that one day I'm going to be 50 years old and I want to look at my 20 year old self and be like, yo, that's you when you were younger. I love that. We're not going to keep our memories. Like these videos, photos, we don't take enough of them. And I know that because I'm always thinking 20, 30, 40 years ahead. 
So a lot of this is for me. So I could care less. I make videos for myself. And if you guys want videos that I want that you want me to make for yourselves, then let me know. Um, I love talking business. I love talking health. I love talking technology. I love just talking about life, um, progress. I love traveling. Any little of these things I'm probably going to be talking about on the pod. Again, I don't have a name for it. We're going to come up with a name. We're going to come up with series. We're going to come up with a bunch of ideas to make this thing more interesting for you guys. So if you guys did like this video, found value in this, or now you know how I went from zero ATMs to 30 ATMs and got some little nuggets from there, please subscribe, hit the like button, follow your boy on Instagram, everything that you have to do, just let's keep growing together. Echale ganas.